What's up YouTube? All right, today you will see me get the normal 240SX engine harness out of there. I gotta get the dash out uh, because I wanna clean the carpet and stuff like that. And uh, if you're new here, don't forget to hit that comment uh, or that subscribe button and comment if you want. Uh, thumbs up, notifications, all that stuff. And uh, if you're around for the long haul, thanks. Let's get going. All right, well now I need to get the dash out to get this wiring out, and, but I mean, that's the big reason. And another main reason is this carpet because as a lot of you probably know, on the stock KA, there's a boot, you have that boot, but there's also a grommet like this that ends up getting worn out and then it just throws uh, transmission oil all down the side of the trans tunnel and then it just it's hard to find a 240 manual does not smell that does not smell like transmission oil and that's the reason why is people don't change these that or it's, it's just kind of a bad design as well so that being the case I need to get this carpet out of here because it still has kind of a an oily smell and I want to get it all cleaned up and I need to get the dash out the dash, taking the dash out will help getting that out and it'll also help uh, show where the, the hole is on there and to make sure I have nothing else connected. So the first thing we got to do is, you know, take off our top bezel thing and it's surprising to find, you know, surprising to find them if they're uh, not broken. So let me get this off real quick. Okay, once you get that loose, of course you'll have your two, your defrost and your hazard connectors that you'll have to that you'll have to disconnect. Okay, once you have those disconnected, and you can get to and be careful to put these, you know, if it's not broken, be careful to put them in a place where they're not gonna get broke because these things are, they get pretty brittle, especially this piece. So with this piece, we have two screws. Yeah. Well, I know this is for the radio. So for the bezel, we have a screw that's off and down here that's not there this time. And then we got a couple screws down here. So let's get those off. Once you get those bottom ones, and then the ashtray one, if it's still in there, get the two top ones. And I don't have the radio connected up right now, so the whole thing will just slide right on out. Right, slide that right on out. So you can see, if you tug too hard, that these are connected to the radio bezel. Alright, well you wanna also yeah if you have your cigarette lighter connected, which I did not, because I've already taken this off before, you'd have that taken off. Alright. Well as for my standard, I'm gonna go ahead and put these screws back in just so I don't lose them. The AC controls have two screws on either side and then I'll just have some connectors like these to take those off and the AC unit will be out. All right we got four screws off as you can see there are three connectors. All right once you get all the AC venting radio and all that stuff out you can move to your center, center console and don't forget if you have mirrors and stuff like that to get these disconnected. Uh, don't just start yanking. Uh, you will have two uh, screw holes down in the back. Um, down over here on the bottom. And they may be uh, capped, so just take those caps. And then straight down here in this hole, there are two more. And then once you get that off, this whole thing, provided you know all your electrical stuff is disconnected, it'll just slide right on off. 
now that you got the center console piece out, we could work on getting your gauge cluster. There are two screw holes right there. And then you have your connectors to make sure those are disconnected. And we'll get these out. Don't forget as well as the six bolts underneath uh, for connecting you know your steering bracket column whatever it is for connecting that and then to connecting it to the actual rod so it moves up and down so get those out that will give you enough space to be able to pull the rest of this stuff out i got those six bolts off went ahead and put this back together and put four of the bolts back in here so i don't lose them hopefully i remember and don't try to pull this apart and break it so I should remember the, I put the screws back in. Uh, don't forget your, you know, your lockout. If it is a manual already. And then that leaves with the two others underneath. All right, after you get this off, you get these screws out, like I said before. You just pull this off and you can after you have these disconnected, you can get this snaked around and get it off. A little bit of struggle getting this off. That will leave you to your gauge cluster, which should be, I believe, three bolts. There's one on this end, one on this end, and then one at the top. Just a friendly, uh, little word of advice when you're getting off the the gauge cluster gauges they're actually locked on both sides so you push in both sides and then it just slides out otherwise you're gonna end up fighting it it's not like most of them where they just have one all right well that's the gauge cluster now you need to get this under uh, undercarriage here next I'm gonna get the dash out and below you see there's these white clips that had a couple screws in them one on one side one on the other then when you let it go you can just twist it to one side and that comes out all right well that will show you where a couple more clips are and we have to work on getting the dash out don't forget to take your top trim off it is if it is not and you'll have a couple bolts in there to get this off so let's go ahead and we got the one down here we're gonna get off and then we'll work our way to the other side you also have two right here under the old glove box that's connected to a frame. You also have a sneaky one hiding under this vent right here. And the bolt that came out of this one has a little bit wider washer probably to give more support. Okay, obviously there's the one right here as well, but there is not one on the driver's side. And don't forget the driver's side. The driver's side one on top as well. As well, you got the two bolts that hold in the hood release. All right, at that point, there are two clips that will hold in the A-pillar, which can be kind of a tricky thing. But after that, should be able to wiggle it and just get it right on out. All right, because I'm not, I'm not absolutely sure, I'm gonna try to get this moved uh, back a little. I'm gonna try not to move, remove this. Just wanna loosen uh, this up to move it so I can get my arms behind there. I know I got one screw here or one bolt there. I got one bolt 
right there another bolt over here and this bolt so let's see what I could do when I get those off underneath and behind here there is one more I guess tie down clip kind of like uh, kind of like one of these that's holding in this harness now that we got that loose should be able to kind of reach underneath kind of start feeding it through as uh, you're pulling it from the other side as well so what I'm doing now is kind of shoving what I can up I'll shove some I will shove some up and then just kind of work it as it gets its way through a little bit here and a little bit here and it's slowly kind of slowly kind of coming through and keep going We're really close to the actual plug. Kind of feel in there. Just got a little bit more. All right. Well, that is a complete uncut unmolested engine harness that was a little bit of a pain but I tell you what got the hole there it did help loosening loosening up this and I loosened uh, two bolts over here on the bottom of this one in order to be able to get it snaked through without an issue. Well that's how you take an engine harness out and uh, yeah now it's time to get the new one in. Stay tuned for more don't forget to comment like and subscribe. Peace.